Hey everyone, welcome back to another Harkla YouTube video. We're so happy to have you. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica, and we are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. Today we are gonna give you 10 super fun activities to work on visual motor skills. I know you do. <laughs> so before you exit out of this video, because you're like, what are visual motor skills? Why are they important? This doesn't matter to me. This isn't life changing. Actually, it's really important. First things first, you need to know what visual motor skills are. So visual motor skills are essentially hand-eye coordination. It is your ability to coordinate both eyes with your movements, specifically hand and arm movements to complete various tasks. So functionally, what you might see with a child who is working on their visual motor skills, it might look like they are working on handwriting or copying from the board at school, or maybe they're playing catch on the playground at school as well. Or even playing soccer. They're not coordinating their eyes and their hands as much, but they are coordinating their eyes and their legs and their whole body and the ball and other players. Soccer is a big visual motor activity. Another one is riding a bike, coordinating the upper body movements with navigating the environment safely, turning, steering, pedaling, it's all connected. Honestly, all play activities that a child does requires visual motor skills. Mm -hmm. And then additionally, even self-care skills like getting dressed, <laughs> self-feeding, drinking from a cup, brushing hair, brushing teeth, all of these daily activities that your child does that you do require good visual motor skills. Which is why it's important as occupational therapy assistants to address these skills because they are your daily occupations. These are occupations or tasks that you have to do every day in order to successfully live happily. Get through your day. <laughs> Let's quickly go over some examples of what it might look like if your child is struggling with visual motor skills. So the first one might be they don't like playgrounds or they don't like playing sports or ball skill games. Another example would be if they're unable to coordinate riding their bicycle or riding a scooter. Maybe they have extreme difficulty with handwriting tasks or cutting tasks. Challenges with self-feeding skills, specifically coordinating a fork and a knife to cut a piece of food or coordinating scooping cereal with their spoon. Difficulty managing buttons or zippers or tying their shoes successfully. They might be clumsy and uncoordinated. They might trip over their own feet or bump into objects in their environment. And lastly, maybe they struggle with things like Legos or blocks or puzzles. Those typical childhood activities, they don't want to participate in them or they get frustrated while participating in them or they avoid them altogether. And actually one more challenge that you might see is difficulty with reading, mm -hmm. copying from the board, any of those school-based activities. We are going to go through 10 activities that you can do to build visual motor skills to in turn improve these underlying skills and these underlying challenges that we just mentioned. The first one is a game where you are going to play with your child and you are going to have a small ball like a racquetball or a bouncy ball and your child is going to be holding a cup and you're gonna sit across the table from each other and you're gonna roll the ball across the table and your child is gonna to have to catch the ball in their cup before it falls on the ground. Now there's a couple of different ways you can make this activity harder or easier. The larger the ball, the easier it'll be, but also to make it harder, you can have two balls and two cups. So you are rolling two balls at the same time and your child has to catch one in each cup in each hand or maybe you roll one ball at a time but you do them like right after each mm -hmm. other so your child has to catch one and then quickly catch the other. You can also incorporate some left and right into this activity so you can say catch the red ball with your left hand and the green ball with your right hand. You're incorporating left versus right as well as some memory skills into this visual motor activity. It's crazy how simple that activity sounds but how challenging it is to work the eyes in order to do so successfully. 
And it's really fun. It is, yes. Really fun. The next one is another simple one. It's just throwing a ball at the wall and catching it. And it sounds simple to do, but it works on a lot of underlying skills. So things like timing and sequencing, force modulation, knowing how much force to use in order to catch it. Do they let the ball bounce after it's hit the wall or do they have to catch it immediately after? Do you have to incorporate some trunk rotation of twisting and then throwing? twisting to the other side and then throwing, throwing it under their legs and then catching it. So they're going upside down. So there's a lot of fun ways that you can modify this activity as well to make it more challenging, easier. Again, the bigger the ball, the easier it's going to be. The smaller the ball, like a racquetball, the harder it's going to be. The third activity that we're gonna talk about is from a program called Balaviz X, and we will link their website in the description as well as a couple of YouTube videos that they have out there. This is a great program, and their focus is working on balance, hand-eye coordination, and just overall visual motor integration. So you use specific racket balls, and they're typically red and blue, yep. and I think maybe there's a green one, I can't remember. Red and blue for sure. And you do a series of exercises with these balls where you bounce and catch them. And the focus here is doing it with correct form. Mm -hmm. It's very fluid and rhythmic and organizing once you get once you get it figured out and once you have that timing down. I love Bell of Azex. Yes. It's one of my favorite programs. Yes. And it definitely, you can see the improvements mm -hmm. in your kiddos when you're doing this acti these activities because with more practice, they'll get better at it and they'll improve all of those underlying skills. The next one is infinity loop tracing or infinity loop reading. So what we're gonna do is draw a big infinity loop either on the wall or on a piece of paper. On the wall, it makes it a little bit more challenging. You can use painter's tape and make a, make a big infinity loop on the wall with painter's tape. And then you can put letters around the infinity loop as well. So that way they can be looking with their eyes and calling out the letters or numbers. Maybe they, if they don't know letters or numbers yet, you could do shapes, you could put stickers. So that way they're following in that pattern. They're going left to right and then switching directions and going the other direction while they are calling out those letters. And then you can add a functional task with their arms as well. They can trace with their hands. They can bounce a ball in between every letter that they are calling out, so some fun challenges that you can add to it. And going along with that, you can do infinity loop walking where you create an infinity loop on the floor, whether that's with painter's tape, balance beams, or you just put two objects a couple of feet away and the child walks around them in the infinity loop pattern, and you place a visual chart on the wall at the same time. As they're walking along the infinity loop, they are reading that visual chart. You can incorporate a metronome into this to help with some timing and sequencing as well, or you can even get a ball going in this and just, I mean, you're getting so much visual motor along with other skills to work on at the, with this activity. The next one is from a program called Astronaut Training and it's a preparatory activity and it's called Robot Zapping. And this is a fun one that we've kind of modified in order to add to to those visual motor skills. So we call it robot zapping because we're gonna pretend these are our robot fingers and we're gonna be have, we're gonna have our back standing against the wall. And from there, we're going to twist and reach across our body and tap a visual that we've put on the wall in different locations. And we're gonna alternate going from our taking our left hand over towards our right and making sure that we're following with our eyes. So a quick modification if you have stickers up and down the wall next to the child. You can ha call out a specific item like a dog and they have to twist and look and find the dog and tap it and then they're going to tap the cat next which is on the other side and so they're getting a lot of that vestibular input as well. So make sure that you're following with some proprioceptive activities, some heavy work activities in case of any dizziness or adverse reactions. Number seven is going to be an activity that simultaneously works on primitive reflexes, which is why we love it so much. So your child is going to be in a quad position, which is on their hands and their knees, kind of in that crawling position, and they're going to be within arm's reach of the wall. You're going to put a visual on the wall at eye level so that when they look up from that quad position, it's at eye level and then you're gonna put a second visual on the floor down by their knees. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna use their finger 
and they're going to tap the visual and they're going to go back and forth between the two different visuals. Now this can be great to work on just reading across a letter chart visual or you can have matching items set up so they have to match the red circle on the wall to the red circle on the floor, the blue square on the wall to the blue square on the floor. And then you want to make sure you're going to incorporate both hands. So however many they do with their right hand, they also do it with their left hand. Love that one. Great for those reflexes, which we love. The next one are simple dot to dot activities, mazes, puzzles, all of these activities, these games really do work on those underlying visual motor skills. One other company that we are going to recommend is called Think Fun. They have great games that require visual motor skills like Rush Hour or um, Pete's Pike or what's the, oh, River Crossing is another oh, funnel where you have to good. set up the game board matching the card and then complete the logic and reasoning puzzle. So some fun ones to try, but just breaking it down, working on simple visual motor skills with games. The next one is to do activities like grid copying games. So you have grid paper and then you have another grid paper with an image on it and the grid is numbered and was it letters, Lettered, yeah. right? Like 4A or 4B, almost like a battleship mm -hmm. is set up on a grid. And that would be another game to that work That would on. be another game. Skills, though. Yes. And this one just incorporates the handwriting component, right? And they're going to copy the image on the first grid with the picture onto their grid following that grid sequence. Yes. It's a great one. <laughs> very simple, but also very challenging. And yes. you can see a lot of those underlying visual motor challenges once you've, once you've had an idea of seeing your child do these. So it's a great way to kind of explore and evaluate their underlying skills. The last one is pouring from cups. And so this is a fun way to work on upper body strength, mid-range control, as well as those visual motor skills. You can have a pitcher and you can have the child pour different amounts of water into the different cups. We like to use painter's tape around the cup so that way they have to look and match the cup with the amount of water in it, if that makes sense, basically like they're measuring. So if you have measuring cups, that works as well. You can also incorporate this into sensory bins. So having two cups that the child has to scoop with one cup, maybe they're scooping beans with one cup and then pouring it into their second cup. So many fun activities. Take one and try it today and then let us know in the comments how it went. Share this video with somebody that you think might also be interested in learning these visual motor activities and make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you also follow us on social media. We love to hang out on Instagram. We are at Harkla underscore family as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. And make sure that you give our podcast a listen as well because we have over 200 podcast episodes full of great information. Thanks for watching today and we will see you next time. Super fun. Super, super fun. The first, ex I didn't cut that out.